Hi there. Welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. We're looking at trigonometric functions. And in this lesson, we're looking at how you solve trigonometric equations that involve sec, cosec, or cot. But before we do that, we'll just quickly take a step backwards and remind ourselves how you solve normal trigonometric equations with sine, cosine, or tangent. So for example, if you had sine 2 theta equals 0.5, and you had to find all of the solutions between minus 360 degrees and plus 360 degrees. How would you do it? The first step is just using your calculator to find the first solution. So you do inverse sine of 0.5, that gives you the first solution. Second step is drawing a very quick sketch of the relevant graph, sine, cos, or tan. In this case, we'll be drawing a sketch of sine x. Step three is using the symmetry of the curve to find a second solution to the equation. Step four will then add or subtract multiples of 360 degrees to find all the solutions in the given range of values for theta. For us, that's from minus 360 up to plus 360. Do be careful. You find all of these extra solutions immediately after you've used your calculator to find inverse sine, um, certainly before we do anything like dividing by two because of the two theta here. Okay, an example for you to have a go at yourselves. Um, I'll put the instructions back for you so you can remind yourself if you need to. Have a go at that, pause the video, and come back when you're ready. Okay, we'll have a look at this together. So sine 2 theta equals 0 0.5 is what we're looking at. The first step was just to use our calculator. So we do inverse sine of 0 0.5. And when we do that, we'll get 30 degrees for the answer. Be careful, it's 2 theta we've got here. So 2 theta could equal 30 degrees. We don't divide by 2 yet. We just leave it as 2 theta could be 30 degrees. Step 2 is sketching the graph of sine x. So we'll do that. That is what sine x looks like. Uh, only three key things to remember. First of all, sine x starts at zero. Second thing, it goes from plus one to minus one. And the third thing is something happens every 90 degrees. So it starts at zero, the maximum's at 90, crossing point at 180, minimum at 270, crossing point at 360, and so on and so on. That was the solution we found using the calculator. Two theta could equal 30 degrees. At this point, we just mark that in the right place on the graph. So it would go there, 30 degrees on the x-axis and 0 0.5 on the y-axis. That's the first solution. That's the one we found using the calculator. Step three is using the symmetry of the curve to find a second solution. Now, sine and cosine, they are symmetric around every single maximum and every single minimum. A vertical line through every maximum, a vertical line through every minimum, would be a line of symmetry. And you can see that by looking at it. Now, what we want to find is the value here. What angle here would give a sine 2 theta of 0 0.5? Well, the distance from 0 to the point is 30 degrees. If the thing is perfectly symmetrical, the distance backwards from 180 will also be 30 degrees. So this point here will be 30 degrees back from 180, using symmetry. So that's the second solution. First one's at 30, the second one's at 30 before 180. After that, we then add or subtract multiples of 360 degrees in order to find as many solutions as we want. Now, on the curve that I've drawn, I've gone from minus 720 to plus 720. You could do less than that, you could do more than that, and then adjust it if and when you need to. But all the other solutions are at exactly the same height. They're all at 0 0.5 on the y-axis. So that's where they would occur. They're done in two colors because they do come in two halves. The black ones are all 360 degrees apart from each other. And the pink ones are also all 360 degrees apart from each other. But when we go looking for the solutions, we do need to look in the two separate halves. So first of all, we'll start with the solution we got from the calculator, 30 degrees. 
and we'll add or subtract multiples of 360 to that to get all the other solutions. So 390 is if you add on 360, add another 360, you'd get that. Take 360 from 30, you'd get that. Take away another 360 and take away another 360 and you'd get that. So that's some of the solutions for um, the first solution, finding multiples of 360 more and less. They do carry on infinitely far in every direction. You never quite know how far you need to go until you've done a few of these questions and got used to them. I always do more than I need and then get rid of extra ones that actually I find out that I don't need in the end. We do the same thing with the second solution, the one that we found from symmetry. So the second solution from the symmetry of the curve was that two theta could equal 150 degrees. We now add or subtract multiples of 360 to that. Adding on 360 would give us 510, add another 360 is that. Take away 360 from 150 will give us that. Take away 360, take away 360, and so on and so on. At this point, we'll halve the values. And you'll notice we've left it very late. They asked us to solve the equation sine of 2 theta is 0 0.5. So all of these are possible solutions for 2 theta. We want solutions for theta. But we don't do the halving till very late in the question, not till now. So halving those values, putting them all in order from smallest to biggest, will give us that list. Minus 525, heading upwards, till we get to 195. In fact, there's a couple more, I think. Yeah, 255, 375, and 435, finishing off the list. Now, at this point, looking at these purple values here, minus 525, minus 465, they're outside the range. We only needed to go as low as minus 360. And same with these two values here, 375 and 435. They're bigger than 360. So they're also outside of the range. We don't need those ones. Now, you don't ever have to have written them down. If you're confident you found all the solutions, you could just write down the red solutions from the beginning. Um, I do like to find one extra solution on either end just to convince myself that I really have found them all. Anyway, the final answer doesn't need those four purple ones. Um, the solutions for theta in the range minus 360 to plus 360 are just the red ones, from minus 345 up to 255 degrees. Okay, what about sec, cosec, and cot? Well, the method is basically the same with one extra step at the beginning. So we'll be doing this example in a moment, solving sec 3 theta equals minus 1.8. In that range, minus 180 to 180, giving the angles to one decimal place in the end. Calculators, in general, do not have sec on them. They only have sine, cosine, and tangent. What that means is the first step is to convert the equation to cosine 3 theta equals something. Now, cosine is 1 divided by sec. So if I do 1 divided by sec to get cosine, I'm also going to have to do 1 divided by minus 1.8 to get the other side of this equation. From then on, it's the same as before. Use your calculator to find the first solution. Sketch the graph of cosine this time. Use the symmetry of the curve to find a second solution. Add or subtract multiples of 360 to find all the other solutions in the given range. Okay, you have a go at doing this first, pause the video, and come back to me when you're ready. Okay, we'll have a look at this together. So that was the question, and the first thing that we said we had to do was convert sec to cos, because you can't do inverse sec on your calculator. Well, one divided by sec three theta is cos three theta, one divided by minus 1.8, will give me minus 0 0.555. Now it's a normal question. So from here on, you just use the standard method. Step two is using your calculator to find the first solution. So you do inverse cosine of minus 0 0.5555. And when you do that, you'll get three theta could equal 123.7 degrees. Don't divide by three, just leave it as three theta for the time being. 
Third step, sketch the graph of cosine x. Cosine x and sine x are obviously extremely similar, but remember the difference. Cosine starts at 1. That's the only difference. Aside from that, they have the same general shape. They go to plus 1, they go down to minus 1. Something significant happens every 90 degrees. So the first crossing point at 90, the minimum would be 180. The next crossing point is 270, the maximum is 360, and so on and so on. That was what we did just now. That was finding the first solution using our calculator, which was that 3 theta could be 123.7 degrees. Well, we draw this on the graph. So at minus 0.56 on the y-axis and 123.7 degrees on the x-axis. And that'll be that point there. The next step, step four, is using the symmetry of the curve to find a second solution. And we said sine and cos, they're symmetric around the maximums, they're symmetric around the minimums. So this minimum point here will be a line of symmetry. There are various ways of doing this. You could say that distance there is 33.7, so do 270 take away 33.7, and that'll give you the solution here. Or if you wanted to, you could say from zero to here is 123.7 degrees. So from 360 to here will be 123.7 degrees. So you could do 360, take away 123.7. There are often many options. All you have to do is see the symmetry of the curve, appreciate the symmetry of the curve, and use it. By whatever method you use, you should get this as the second solution. So also at minus 0.56, because that's where all of the solutions will be. And in this case, 236.3. If you did 270, take away 33.7, that would be one way of getting that. Finally, we add or subtract multiples of 360 to find all of the other solutions. And all the other solutions are the crossing points, which are at this same height of minus 0.56. So that's where they would occur. The green ones are all 360 degrees apart from each other. The black ones are all 360 degrees apart from each other. So we need to find them in two halves. The green ones first. The first, the green one we found was using the calculator, 123.7 degrees. Adding on multiples of 360 will give me that and then that. Taking away multiples of 360 will give me that and then that. Now, we'll be a little bit more smart this time. When I divide these by 3, I have to get an angle which is between minus 180 and plus 180. It's immediately clear that when I divide those by 3, they will be bigger than 180. So I can say straight away, I'm not going to need that one. I'm not going to need that one. They'll be outside the range. The second solution we found using symmetry was 236.3 degrees. We then add or take away multiples of 360 from that. That will give us these values. And again, we can look at them and we can say, well, which ones are going to be too big after we divide by 3? Well, 596 will be bigger than 180. Minus 843 will be bigger than minus 180. So we won't be needing those two either. So when we divide by 3, put them all in order, and discard the values that are outside of the range that we don't need, then we'll get theta could be minus 161.2 and these values until we get up to plus 161.2. It's worth noting the symmetry here in the answer. You always get it with cos theta. And because sec is related to cos theta, you also always get it with sec theta. As long as all you have is cosine or sec of a multiple of theta. Cosine is symmetrical around zero. That means for every positive solution, there's a matching negative solution. That'll always happen with cosine. It'll always happen with sec. Okay, that gets us to the end of this lesson. If you have the textbook, turn to page 56 and go to exercise 3C. Questions 5 to 8 and question 11 are on this type of question. Thank you very much for listening. And cheerio.